Hello everyone, I'm Rashmi Sardesh Pandey and I am a children's author. Now I write a real mix of things from fiction to non-fiction, like the books that you can see behind me here. But the books that I would like to talk to you about today are How to Be Extraordinary and How to Change the World. And these two books are beautifully illustrated by an artist called Annabelle Tempest. I'm going to give you a sneak peek into her wonderful artwork in just a moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you a little bit about these books and why I wrote them, why they matter so much. And then I am going to set you a challenge. And this challenge is going to involve words and pictures because these books are made up of words and beautiful full colour pictures. I mean, look at this. I said I'd give you a sneak peek. I couldn't resist. I mean, look at it. Just stunning artwork from Annabelle. Because we're talking about non-fiction stories here. That means we're telling true stories pulled from the real world and the people inside it. Now, I tell parts of those stories through my words, but Annabelle tells parts of those stories through her wonderful pictures. And together, that is how we bring these stories to life for you, the reader. So you're going to have a chance to do that as well. Use words and pictures to bring an incredible story to life. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Before we get to the challenge, I'd like to just tell you a little bit about each of these books. So first up, How to Be Extraordinary. Now this book contains 15 true stories of incredible humans, just like you. And I say just like you, because it was really very important to me when I was writing this book and thinking about who to include. It was so important to me that there would be someone some story in here that every single reader could connect with. Now, I didn't see myself very often in books when I was growing up, and I know lots of authors and illustrators, sadly, who feel the same. And we are working on changing things, lots of us are, and we are working on making sure that we write books, especially non-fiction books. We're talking about facts, we're talking about the world, so we have to have everyone reflected in these pages. It is only fair, it's only right. And so I wanted to make sure with this and the heroes that I chose to include, because that's what we're talking about here, extraordinary people, heroes, role models. I wanted to make sure that I had people from all over the world, from all kinds of backgrounds and people with all kinds of interests too. So that no matter where you're from, no matter what your background or what you're interested in, whether you like nature or art or science or coding or code breaking, or you're really into spies, or like me, you're into absolutely everything and you just want to soak it all in, you will find someone in here or a story in here that pulls you in. That's what I set out to do. And I hope that I've managed to do it. So far, people are saying that everyone's found something in here. So I hope that you do too. So that's what I wanted to do. And I wanted to make sure that I included a mix of people. So some very well-known faces like Sir David Attenborough, who you may know, a very famous naturalist and documentary maker. Here he is. And I love this picture of him here with lots of pets as a child. And this is one of my favourite pictures from the book. That's Sir David Attenborough being cuddled by mountain gorillas, an iconic scene from one of his famous documentaries. So Famous people like that, like Sir Mo Farah, double, double Olympic champion, an incredible story. Um, you see him here playing football because that's what his big dream was when he was a child, not running. He actually got noticed running on the pitch by his PE teacher who said, hang on a second, Mo, you've got something here. We need to work on your running. But what he really wanted to do as a child is, is play football. Um, but again, an incredible story. And I loved researching this one because Mo Farah's story is a story about perseverance and hard work and putting his 100% into his training. And I love his attitude to training too, because he says, as long as he was given his 100%, even if he doesn't win a race, he doesn't feel bad about it because he says, I gave it my all. I did everything that I could. What I'm going to think about is what my strategy is for next time, you know? Really, really amazing story there. So some well-known faces like that, but some lesser known faces too, like Keiko Fukuda Sensei. Um, 
she was a grandmaster judoka and she reached the very highest level of judo, the 10th Dan, when she was 98 years old. I mean, wow. So, you know, mix of well-known heroes and not so well-known heroes. But what do they all have in common? They are extraordinary people and they show us that there are many different ways to be extraordinary and make us think about the ways that we could be extraordinary too and the ways we already are extraordinary. And I hope that's what you get thinking when you look at this book. So that's how to be extraordinary. How to change the world isn't about individuals. It is about movements and teamwork and the amazing things that we humans can achieve when we work together. And I wrote this book because I wanted to show that you don't have to change the world alone. I know that we are facing some pretty big problems here on this planet of ours, some really big challenges. And those challenges can feel too big for any one person. And I know sometimes you can look at an amazing role model, a hero, and say, well, you know, they did all of these incredible things, but I'm just me, I'm just one person. Well, what we don't usually read about is all the amazing people who have stood behind those heroes and supported them and made what they have done in this world possible. And so this book takes you back to teamwork. It takes you back to movements, groups of people coming together, joining their voices together to do incredible things. And there are so many examples inside this book. Like the match women's strike of 1888, here you had 1,400 women walk out of their factory in protest of their terrible, terrible working conditions. We've got stories like the fight to save the whales, conservationists, environmentalists, raising awareness about these beautiful creatures and pressurising governments to make sure that they do everything in their power to help protect them. We've got stories like the Montgomery bus boycott, an incredible story where an entire community stood up and stood together against discrimination because no one should be discriminated against based on the colour of their skin. And we've got stories like the start of fairer trade, the fair trade movement in so many different forms, which helps us think about, remember the people behind the food that we eat and the clothes that we wear, reminding us that we need to be making sure that they are paid fairly and treated fairly too. So, so many wonderful stories in this. And one where I absolutely adore the pictures is the story of Pipalandri, a village in India where 111 trees are planted every time a baby girl is born. And in a world where there is so much unfairness, inequality between girls and boys, this is a really, really beautiful gesture. And they do so much more to help protect and nourish and raise these girls as well. So lots of stories in this book of movements for change, for positive change, but also extraordinary examples of teamwork, things that no one person could have done alone, like building the Great Pyramid of Giza or building the International Space Station, which is an amazing example of cooperation between countries. Yeah, I mean, wow. And I loved looking up all of these stories because they, they just, they make you feel good. They make you feel so positive and hopeful about the world. And I hope you feel that way when you're reading them. Now, on to the challenge. What I'd like you to do is find uplifting, extraordinary stories that inspire you. They might be stories about an extraordinary person, if you want to focus on a hero, or maybe an extraordinary example of teamwork, international cooperation, or cooperation between people, a group of people who've done something amazing. It might be from history. It might be an example from the world today, something in the news maybe. It might even be something in your local community or in your school or even in your classroom. But have a think, look around you, find those positive stories because there are so many. Find those heroes because there are so many wonderful heroes out there. They might even be someone from your family. It could be absolutely anyone. Think about the qualities that make someone extraordinary. Think about the difference that people can make when they come together and work together for positive change. Find those wonderful stories. And then I would like you to tell that story through words and pictures. Now you've seen how Annabelle and I do this. We 
have a mix of storytelling through words and then Annabelle has these fantastic pictures. Sometimes she's got speech bubbles and she's got speech in there to help set the scene. You can do this any way you like and in fact if you would like to do this as a comic feel free to do it as a comic with panels you know but use words and pictures. See how they work together and if you do include pictures and you're talking about something that's historical do a little bit of research to think about what people wore at the time. What did the buildings look like? There is so much work that has gone into these pictures on Annabelle's side. Maybe you could do a little bit of that research and put some of those fascinating details into your pictures too. But bring those positive stories to life through words and pictures. That is the essence of this challenge. And I can't wait to hear and see what you come up with. So happy researching, happy reading, happy writing and happy illustrating. Thank you so much for watching. Have fun with it. Bye.